Hi all, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and click on the bell icon to get the latest updates. For course inquiries, visit our website www.gatelectures.com and don't forget to register and subscribe to the latest post section. So in the last video, we have seen a very, very simple example that we cannot be dependent on the machine architecture. But still there's one more reason which I can give you why you should not be dependent on the, the number uh, on the actual machine running time because there are still the number of problems which cannot be solved in this lifetime mind you when i'm saying in this lifetime okay so there's a problem which is called as a towers of hanoi problem the problem name is towers of hanoi okay now what if one day a client come to your office and he says sir i want you to design a software for me and the software will be to solve the problem of towers of hanoi in for all the 64 plates okay what is the towers of hanoi problem initially so you should know that problem then only you will be able to solve it so let me do one thing let me um, show you two uh, the basic example the reason you know the story behind the towers of hanoi problem and then you can uh, you know accordingly we can discuss about it okay so it is towers of hanoi so if you search it uh, about this problem on google you can find it out so this is a problem like this the problem is towers of hanoi problem as it is also known as towers of brahma and here in this problem uh, there is uh, there's a game which is also available for this uh, let me write it down so towers of hanoi game so that will be much better way of understanding this particular problem so as, as you can see here uh, we have three uh, towers here tower one tower two tower three and our aim is to uh, take all these plates from tower one to the third tower in the minimum number of moves that are possible now with those minimum number of moves if let us suppose the number of plates are three how you can take it so here you can see easily you can see the answer is already given but let us let me show it to you how you can take take it the rule is on a smaller plate you cannot put a bigger plate and at a one time you can only lift one plate so what you can do here is you can put this plate here then this one here then this one here and the last one here so as you can see uh, because I have a lot of practice so I can easily solve this problem and uh, I solved it in the minimum number of moves that is only 7. What if the number of plates are 4? If the number of plates are 4 then how I can solve this problem? So that way I can solve it like this. Uh, as you can see here, see I have practiced uh, this many times that is why I know how to solve this but you may not be able to get it on the first go. Okay. So as you can see here the number of minimum number of moves that will be required to solve this problem with the four plates is 15 so i solved it in 15 if the number of plates are five then how many number of moves are required so here you can see in the towers of hanoi problem if the number of plates the first one is representing the number of plates which are n okay so the first one is number of plates which are n and the second one is representing the number of moves if the number of plates is 1 then the number of moves required is 1 that is you can move the one plate from uh, first tower to the last tower if the number of plates are 2 then the number of moves required are 3 if the number of plates are 3 the number of moves required are 7 if the number of plates are 4 the number of moves required are 15 number of plates is 5 number of moves required are 31 number of plates is 6 number of moves required are uh, 63 if the number of plates are n then the number of moves required are 2 raised to the power n minus 1 so this is the number of moves required for towers of hanoi problem now a client come to us and he gives us uh, this program and we have taken assuming that we have taken the project to solve this problem now classically if you see the towers of hanoi problem here you can see there are 64 plates that we can we take in the towers of hanoi problem so as you can you can easily search it on wikipedia you can find out the story about uh, indian temple in kashi Vishwanath, which contains a room with three time uh, worn posts it's surrounded by 64 golden discs so the classical problem is with 64 discs 
so if we have a total of 64 plates here that means you want to move 64 plates from one tower to the third tower now for those 64 plates it is going to take around 2 raised to power 64 minus 1 moves as you can see it is 2 raised to power 64 minus 1 will become a very very big number for the towers of Hanoi problem now the 6 for 64 it is 2 raised to power 64 minus 1 now here lies the problem this number is so huge that if you take one move per second then roughly it is going to take you 587 billion years to move all the 64 plates from the first tower to the third tower now if you take the world's fastest computer or even just super computer which is designed till date if even if you are going to take that computer and you are going to give the same uh, problem you are going to write a program the pr writing a program or algorithm to solve this problem is very very easy right uh, i've already introduced that algorithms in uh, algorithm in data structure subject but just understand that this problem can be solved and there's a very very easy implementation to uh, uh, you know represent this problem as a program now if you are going to execute that program and the number of uh, statements that you are going to execute or number of uh, disk that you are going to give is around 64 then for the world's fastest computer again it is going to take more than 500 billion years to solve that problem now what if the client come to us and he asks us to solve the problem we have taken the problem and now you solve the problem and when you delivered it you cannot run the program right you started running in the morning uh, in the demonstration to the client and still till evening you cannot get, get an output again multiple times you cannot run the program now at this particular position you should be able to explain that if i cannot solve this problem right because this problem is not solvable if the number of plates are going to increase then obviously the problem no one is going to live for 500 billion years right so you you, ha you are going to say that i've created a right program the program logic everything is correct but if the program this kind of problem if cannot be solvable by me or our computer then obviously it cannot be solved by any other computer in the whole world so you should be in a position to prove this so to prove this it requires that we should be able to count what is the number of statements that are that are being executed accordingly we can prove that because the number of statements that will be executed for this kind of problem is so huge it is too huge that no one in the whole world right now no one will be able to solve this problem if i cannot solve it that is why also this topic is very very important about what is the number of statements that, that, that are being executed okay now you know that to find the time complexity uh, to find uh, which program is better the primary measurement is about the number of statements that are being executed and uh, also the one more one more primary me measurement is what is the amount of space that are that is taken by a program so we'll discuss about the sp say space complexity later on so first of all uh, let me show you to some examples of a few programs where we are going to compare those programs in terms of what is the number of statements that are being executed and then i'm going to introduce you th to the new concepts and and which are uh, actually the asymptotic notations which is the rate of growth of a function because generally time complexity and space complexity this uh, there are two ways of measuring them number one is the rate of growth of function which is also called as the asymptotic notations and there's one more way of measuring this time complexity for a given function that based on the average statements okay uh, that is generally implemented like uh, in hash tables also we use that concept so we are going to go to that concept later on but just now understand that we are only going to measure what is the number of statements that are being executed and accordingly we can find out given two programs which program is better okay now let us move on to the next video